Hey, welcome back to Ultimate RC Events. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you can follow us as we go on the journey to push over 150 kilometers an hour. I think we're gonna get there pretty easy because what's about to come up is the first recorded run that we've got the GPS, which is 128 kilometers an hour. We still haven't hit full throttle, so we're gonna surpass 150 without a problem. Enjoy the video. There's some updates in this, a uh, little bit of information on what we've done to the boat, and then we get into the runs. Okay, here we go with the boat up close. So what have we done since the uh, first initial runs? We mentioned in the first video we had steering problems. One of those was in the computer radio. Um, we didn't have what we call expo or exponentials. So that's every time we move the steering, we get a rudder movement. What we had was 35% expo, which means every time we move the steering a little bit, it only moves a fraction. When we move the steering more, then it moves more. It dampens the steering. We put that in thinking that I might have major problems with the boat, which was really silly because I should have known better. Um, it was not going to be an issue. The other issue was we have on the back, and I'll try and show you here, we've got a pull-pull system. Two cables that run down to the servo. And the problem with that is the rudder has a pivot point here and an offset rudder steering mechanism here. So instead of the steering being here in line with the pivot point, which would have been a lot easier if that was moving like that, when you move the steering on here, it throws these arm outwards, which means if you work all the angles, the angles down to the servo, you end up with a slack line. So you turn one way, that one's pulling and this one ends up slack, which means you end up with a lot of rudder movement. That was a, another problem in the steering on the first run. We've now corrected that when you, when you turn, there's no movement, you turn, there's no movement. But what I've picked up is a little bit of slack on the straight line. Now, how do we do that? We use an offset here. So we mimic the offset here. From there to there's about 20 mil or 20 mil to there is the offset, 20 millimeters. And then back here, we run a similar offset of 20 millimeters, but the science isn't exactly that because we've got fixed points here and here with tubes going in here and that changes things a little bit. So what we do is to come down here, we've created this aluminium there and you can see if i put my finger there's a hole just there on both sides we first ran the lines to that hole and it got way tight and then went a bit slack now we've pulled them back changed the angle slightly from the pivot point and that problem's starting to go away so we think we need to come back just a little bit more and then we'll hopefully have the same pull pull all the way down to the back without slack lining, which means we'll have positive rudder pressure on here without that little bit of slack. So we've got it on the turn. There's hardly any movement there. Hardly any movement there. But then we've got that little bit of movement there. Now in the video, you'll see we spin the boat out for the first time and we get speed wobbles. And I make mention that I'm not sure it's what it is. It, it, it's highly likely it could be that, but again, I just don't think rudder movement of that amount would really do it, but maybe it is. Apart from that, everything else is running beautifully. Uh, the MGM controllers are running nice and cold. We're pulling the data and starting to understand the data on those. We're working with MGM to understand a bit more and um, we'll post this up and the data graphs and figures up on our website. Um, we make mention of that at the end of the video if you want to know more about the data that comes off these. There we go, there's the update as I cut myself off from waffling too much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Steering's better. Steering's a lot better, but she's sitting up today. Gained a lot more confidence in the steering now, so uh, the runs are a bit smoother. 
Um, we're still not on the long side of the lake, so the, we're, we're still running the short runs, um, getting a bit of power, but not letting the boat extend. So watch what happens on this next pass. The boat does a spin, uh, and then we'll talk about what, what I, my thoughts were. Jumping about a little bit. And freeze it there. So we had a speed wobble as such just before this spin out, and we're not sure what happened. We don't know if we hit something. Here's the slow-mo. Slow it down, it's wobbling. I put some rudder input and then the boat just loses it. The rudder was fine, the pull-pull system was fine. We did runs after this. We did the 128 kilometer an hour pass. We're still not sure what, what happened. If you know, let us know in the comments below. Um, we'll take it on board and, and we'll go from there. But the runs after that, the fourth run was fine. Uh, not sure what happened. So you got tailing on there. Mm. Is it because it's positioned different? Because I hit the throttle then. Their last run there, we gave it a bit of a uh, bit of stick, opened the throttle up. The data logs I said I'd put on my social media, I'm actually going to put it on my website. It's a bit hard to put on social there, Excel files and graphs. So we're going to figure out a way to try and uh, get that really easy for you to see. That'll be on www.ultimaterc.com.au. Under projects, um, look for the boat. You'll see some of the other things we play with uh, and we'll put the data logs there. More information will be coming soon and we're just going to get faster.